if they have a receptor and it fits into the receptor, it'll activate the B cells. B cells increase in number. They'll go, they'll produce their product. They'll secrete the IGs, for example, and they can also create their memory cells. Now, the T cells, in the T cell with the antibodies, their job, health, be the helper T cells. There were two other types of T cells, okay? The helper T cell helps the B cell. Then we had the cytotoxic T cell and the memory T cell. All right, so there are two more T cells to deal with. Antibodies, when we're dealing with the antibodies, antibodies, as you can see, they're going to be very specific. They're like branching, okay, is going to have to fit directly into that receptor on the B cell. If it fits into the receptor of the B cell, the B cells are going to either produce antibodies or they're going to produce immunoglobulins. These are the IgG's that I mentioned. Note G A M D E. If you don't have one of these, you're in trouble. Okay? When people give blood, this is one of the things that blood is separated out for. It is separated out for the IgG's. So they're very important. Antibodies. Look at what we use antibodies for. A direct attack on a pathogen, activation of complement, or a localized change. What's the goal of every single one of those? Stop the pathogen. Stop that pathogen. When we have an immune response, the first time that you're exposed to something new, okay, like <clears throat> I know right now that whatever this virus is that I got exposed to, I, you know, I emailed my doctor and I was like, hey, what's going around that has these symptoms, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, it's running rampant in Richmond. It's a respiratory virus. There's nothing that really can be done for it. You just got to kind of treat it, you know, with um, over-the-counter stuff. And she said, unfortunately, it's lasting anywhere from six to eight weeks. And I'm like, do what? I'm like, so third week, so hopefully I'm halfway through, but hey. But what I do know my body is going through the process of building the cells so if I get exposed to it again I'm not going to get sick again. This first response that I'm having man it's a long one six to eight weeks but the next time I get exposed I'm not even going to get sick because my immune response look how quick it's going to be the second time and it's going to be done. Yeah, they got a really strong so immune. Yes. And that's what's kind of confusing me, because I normally don't get sick. But then again, I had to stop and tell myself, well, now, wait a minute, do not, you know, you're officially over 50 now, so um, that thymus gland, you know, it's going away and blah, blah, blah. So I'm just like, dang, gone it. And, you know, and I had just gone to the doctor, what, 
two weeks before and signed a little thing saying, no, I don't want the flu shot, which is not the flu, you know, it's just a respiratory virus, but still, I was like, no, I'm not getting that flu shot. So, immunity. Immunity, when we talk about having immunity, we have these types of immunity. You either have something naturally acquired and active, artificially acquired and active, artificially acquired and passive, naturally acquired and passive. Differences, live pathogens for natural, artificial active vaccine. Artificial passive gamma globulins containing antibodies or antitoxins given to you. Naturally acquired passive, it's what the pregnant woman gives to her newborn and then through the breast milk. This is what begins to happen. Note the natural and artificial actives, they're going to last longer. These artificial passive and natural passive, they're only short term. So the long term um, and then short term. Sometimes short term, short term could be something as like being people who are allergic to bee stings and needing the shots to someone being bit by a snake and having to be given the antitoxin. You know, so it's really, it's really kind of interesting what happens. When something affects us and becomes one of these antigens, we go through allergic reactions. We can have four types of allergic reactions. Type one, immediate. You're exposed, you get an immediate reaction. Could be something as simple as having hives to death. Okay? Type two, we're dependent on an antibody. We're dependent on that B cell and its products can take of one to three hours to develop. A good example, what happens when you're given the wrong blood, the reaction to a blood transfusion. Type three, <laughs> immune complex. So think about all the types of immunity that we have. One to three hours, basically we can't clear whatever it is from the body. The body's attacking itself and it's going to damage our own body tissues. Type 4, a repeated exposure. Let's say that you have repeatedly been given penicillin and each time you took penicillin you never had a response. But this was the fifth time they gave it to you and all of a sudden, boom, you have that response to penicillin. That would be repeated exposure to an allergen and the response will show up. <coughs> Take a break, be back in my third.